Ohio's chair today looks like it did back in 1897 when it was first used. Its inventor is Dr. David Rockwell, who was from Milan, Ohio, the same city that produced Thomas Edison. Rockwell felt it was indecent to hang people, felt the electric chair would be quicker, less painful, and more humane. Rockwell said, if the law must kill, then let it kill decently. Rockwell was well aware of the many ways that man executed, like the guillotine, or sawing someone in half, or boiling him in oil, or literally pressing a person to death slowly. Since Rockwell's invention 93 years ago, 312 men and three women have gone to their deaths through electrocution in Ohio. The story of the electric chair in Ohio is filled with many ironies, and perhaps the most ironic of all took place on November 9, 1911, when this man was electrocuted for murder. His name? Charles Justice. At the turn of the century, Justice was a prison inmate in Columbus and helped build and install Ohio's only electric chair. He served his time, was released from prison, but returned to prison 13 years later and died in the same electric chair that he helped build. The first to die in Ohio's electric chair was 17-year-old Willie Haas in 1897 for raping and murdering a farmer's wife near Cincinnati. Newspaper coverage of Haas' killing was like most turn-of-the-century reporting, elaborate, colorful, and certainly opinionated. Example, terror goes through the hell of flames of the mysterious beyond, and without a tremor, Bruno Curvis dies. At the fatal stroke of 11 p.m., Rocky was left to a green door of death. No sooner had he entered the death chamber than he tore himself... So when Hollywood movies of the late 1930s colorful and opinionated newspaper headlines of an electrocution, it wasn't all that far-fetched. Donald Reinbolt was the last person to die in the chair in 1963. He held up a grocery store owner, got $60, then murdered him. Today, no one knows when, if ever, Ohio's electric chair will be used again. Experts agree the chair is more humane than hanging, the firing squad, or cyanide gas. Ohio's chair has an automatic timing device, which sends 1,750 volts through the condemned's body for 20 seconds, followed by 50 seconds of 600 volts, then 10 seconds of 1,750 volts again. This is it. The electric chair, often called Old Thunderbolt by people on death row. Since 1897, it's been the one and only electric chair used in Ohio. And since that time, a total of 315 men and women have died in it. Ohio doesn't have an executioner. Instead, an execution team of 11 assigned and volunteer correctional officers carried out electrocutions at the Ohio Penitentiary in Columbus. Only the prison superintendent knows which of two persons pushes the death button. There'll be two staff members appointed to that task. One of these switches, which I will disconnect and will only be known to me. So that, in essence, we never know who pressed the button for the execution. That's correct. Once the condemned is strapped in the chair, he can only see a reflection of himself in the window, behind which is a darkened witness room. And as soon as the current is turned down, there's a painless and instantaneous loss of consciousness. There's a generalized convulsion uh, because of the electrical activity in the brain. Uh, so the body stiffens up, and, and when the current is turned off, uh, the heart invariably has stopped, and there's cardiac arrest. Donald Reinbold was the last person to be electrocuted in Ohio. Among the witnesses was Al Orton, assigned to the electrocution as a cub reporter for the Associated Press. There's a wall with a few little uh, holes in it, peephole-like thing, and the uh, warden just looked over and nodded and uh, zap, he uh, lurched in the chair. There was a hum big humming noise and he lurched in the chair. And they, they gave him about three jolts. Uh, I understand the first one killed him, but uh, I guess they're making sure.